everyone, welcome to today's video. My name is Dr. Anya Weissman and I'm gonna be busting some filler myths today and explaining to you um, essentially the two reasons to get filler. And the reason I wanted to do this video is because there are so many people that I talk to who say, oh no, 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 I'd never get filler. I don't wanna look crazy and they imagine these very extreme filler cases. And we have to keep in mind that people who have very unnatural looking injectables um, are either at, in the hands of injectors that aren't very good, or that is the look they're going for. And so there are two reasons to get filler, and that's what we're talking about today. Please like this video, subscribe, share with your friends and help my channel grow. And let's talk about the first reason to get filler. And this is my favorite reason for doing filler, which is uh, a process I call invisible aging. And people ask me all the time, what does invisible aging mean? And it means that we, by the grace of God, continue aging and living our healthy lives. But that doesn't mean that our physical appearance has has to reflect our age. We have so many tools these days to preserve healthy skin and a youthful appearance that to me there's no reason to uh, continue to age visually if you don't have to. Unless of course that's not a priority. You know, aesthetics is not everybody's jam. Some people don't care how they look. Some people like looking their age so to each his own but invisible aging to me means that you age but it doesn't necessarily show and fillers are actually a part of that so when we age multiple things happen one thing that happens is we lose our bone our bone resorbs our jaw gets smaller our eye sockets get bigger the skull hole it for our nose gets bigger and our nose starts to fall in and the tip starts to point down because it's fallen in so there are a lot of changes that happen on the structural bone level where almost like our face our bone structure of our face gets smaller and so then we have too much tissue too much skin too much of everything else and the wrinkles come so one thing is to address volume loss Another thing is to address the skin and to use skincare and use in-office procedures like lasers and microneedling that encourage the skin to start behaving in a more youthful way, which just means the cells are healthy and they're more active. So the skin cell turnover is similar to youth, uh, to the youth, to young people than to people in their 40s or their 50s or their 60s or, or older. And so it depends on which layer of aging we're addressing. We use, we have different tools for each layer of the skin. So bone is a layer, the deep fat is a layer, the muscles are a layer, the superficial fat is a layer, and the skin is the tablecloth or the covering the most superficial layer. And so we can address each layer with different tools in our toolbox. And filler is one of the tools that we can use to restore volume where volume has been lost. So going back to the original question, why get filler? I said there are two reasons. So one is to restore the volume that's been lost, that was there originally. So when people get filler for this reason, they don't actually change or modify the way they look they're just preserving the way they look and have looked in the past. The danger with that is obviously overfilling. And we've seen that time and time again, where someone will go to get filler, they look fantastic. And filler lasts a lot longer than people think. Uh, filler has been seen on MRI imaging over 10 years after it's been injected. Obviously the volume isn't the original volume, there's a lot less there, but it's still there. So one of the reasons we got into this pillow face, this very rounded, overfilled, full appearance, 
was because people were getting filler and then they were getting more filler before the old filler disappeared and then more and then more and every year they would top up and so every year they had more than they've ever had before. The goal is to restore what's been lost and stop and leave it there and not add on top of that. And so that's one reason to, uh, to use fillers is to restore that bone loss deeply. And very, very superficially, there are other fillers that help sort of substitute that superficial fat that's been lost um, with very, very liquidy, very thin fillers. And then there are biostimulators, which kind of stimulate our skin to produce collagen, but that's, that's sort of a separate entity of its own. So fillers can be used deep on the bone to simulate the appearance of bone, or they can be injected superficially to simulate the fat that's underneath the skin. So those are the two reasons where you continue to look like yourself and you continue to look natural. Another reason to get filler is to change the way you naturally look. For example, someone with small lips may want bigger lips. Someone with a small chin or retruded chin may want a more prominent proportional chin. Someone without a sharp jawline may use filler to sharpen the jawline. So that's a case where filler is used to actually alter our natural appearance. So we're, we're attempting to change the way we look. And that's a whole different sort of a ballpark. And that's where things can also go extreme. Someone with small lips gets a little bit of lip filler. They love it. So they get some more, they love it. Then they forget what they originally look like and they keep getting more and more and more filler. And eventually they get to a point where when you look at them, all you see is lips. So it's really, really important. I always say that if you're looking for a provider, you always want to find someone who always will reference your original photos. And even if you're trying to change something, uh, larger lips, you know, sharper jaw, whatever it is, it's always really important to know the baseline, to remember the baseline, because eventually you might be correcting something that wasn't even naturally there. It just needs dissolving. So you don't need more filler to correct something that isn't even an original problem. It's just, filler maybe that's migrated. So always, always reference your original photos, whether, whether they're taken at the office or whether you have them on your phone or whether you took them yourself, you always wanna know your natural baseline. It's really important. There's one more really, really important piece to keep in mind and nobody talks about this and I don't know why. And that is, looking perfect after filler injections with the face at rest. You see this on Instagram all the time. So injectors will post a before and after, and the after might be beautiful, stunning, remarkable, just such an improvement. But the key is always animation. That perfectly filled person might look ridiculous when they animate and they, for instance, have a big smile on their face. All that filler, if it's not placed properly or if there's too much there, will move. And then when they smile, they're just so full here. And so whenever I look at before and after, even of uh, really well-known accounts, sometimes I look at the after and I just think to myself, I would really like to know what you now look like smiling. So I always ask, I have a lot of patients that come to me because they want ultrasound guidance to dissolve filler actually, so they're doing the reverse. But I always, always want to see their original before photos because sometimes you don't, you wanna dissolve a little bit of what you had, let's say too much was injected, but you'd benefit from just a little bit there. So you don't wanna dissolve everything, you just wanna dissolve some of the filler. Uh, and I'll, I'll use myself as an example. So in the aesthetic industry, I have been told so many times that I'm underfilled. I need more filler. 
uh, pretty much I need it everywhere. I need it in my cheeks, I need it in my temples, I need it here, I need it in my jawline. And some of that is probably true to, let's say, to get to a more aesthetic perfect, but I know that when I smile, my face is really full. So now imagine if I took that advice and I filled all in here and I smiled, I would look crazy. I would look like a pillow and I don't want that. So I may look like I could use a little volume at rest, but I am a very animated person and I like to smile and I like to laugh and I would rather look happy and then natural when I'm smiling than to look strange and overfilled when I'm smiling but nice at rest because I'm never really at rest. We're always talking, we're always animating, we're always moving our faces. And so that's actually something else that no one really thinks about, but to be perfectly filled at rest may be too much when you animate. So another thing to keep in mind. One last point I'll touch on before I wrap up is what hyaluronic acid fillers are made of. There are fillers that are permanent. They're made of plastic particles. I never use that. Remember one thing, nothing permanent is a good idea in the face because the face always changes. It ages, things fall, things shrink, things alternate. And if you ever get anything permanent, there will come a time where it won't fit anymore. And so it's always better to get things that will move with the face, disappear over time, and you can refill or start again, or even dissolve and refill. It's always, always better. So hyaluronic acid fillers are dissolvable. They can be dissolved with hyaluronidase or Hylanex, but they're also absorbed by our bodies over time. And I did say that we can still find them in our bodies a decade later, but never in the original amount. So there's a residual filler there. They are cross-linked. So our body makes hyaluronic acid, our dermis makes it. It's what makes our skin spongy. It's what holds onto water so our skin is not completely dehydrated. And that is a natural substance. And hyaluronidase is an enzyme that breaks down hyaluronic acid and we produce that also. So we have the whole system naturally existing in our bodies. And so science has created a hyaluronic acid in the lab. And the reason they cross-link it, imagine if you have, you know, strings, curly strings, and you link them together with clips or pins. So hyaluronic acid that's natural in our body isn't cross-linked like that. So they're just gonna be these squiggly strings that inter intertwine with each other naturally. And to preserve the longevity of fillers, what companies do is they add these, you know, paper clips or these clips, these attachments, so that these strings will hold on to each other and they don't dissolve, they don't get um, dissolved by our body as quickly. Because who would wanna get filler for hundreds of dollars that will be gone in a few weeks? And so that's how they're different from our natural hyaluronic acid, that they don't dissolve as quickly and we can have lasting results that we've paid for. But they are dissolvable and hyaluronic acid is everywhere in our body and basically the only difference is the, the cross-linking that happens uh, with the injectables. So that's what I wanted to clarify in case you're wondering what is it and how is it different from the hyaluronic acid we have that we produce. I hope you found this helpful. If you have any questions, leave them down below and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.